What's up guys? My name is Dustin. I'm a graphic design lead here at Custom Offsets. Been with the company for about three and a half years and today I'm going to break down my story. I consider myself an enthusiast. I've been an enthusiast since I, before I walked in the door of, you know, of this place. I would say the majority of my life growing up in California, I, I was very much so into motorcycles, but uh, Custom Offsets has really driven me towards the truck and automotive scene and side of things. In my life, I've owned majority trucks, so I, I don't want to say I don't want to say that I didn't ever ha or I, I didn't always have a passion for trucks. I just I didn't really know it until I came here that that's what it was, right? I've had a couple cars. My first car was a 2002 Honda Civic, and since then I've pretty much have owned nothing but uh, Jeeps and trucks. I had a 2004 Jeep Wrangler TJ that I lifted up and, and you know put some wheels and tires on. I've had like six Rams. Uh, my first one, I, I did a From the Gallery episode that I told you guys all about, it was a pretty wild hodgepodge mess of a vehicle with extended fender flares and unpainted freaking bedsides when we pulled them off and just, a, it was a mess. But it was awesome to me, right? I, I thought it was super cool. From there, I had a, a 2014 Ram. I've had a 2010 Ram that had like crank windows and it was like a six speed, whatever. And when I started here, I, I did have my 14 Ram and I, I went ahead and I put wheels and tires on it right away. It was right when we launched Archon and I thought it was the coolest thing to be able to take a wheel that you know we started the company for and throw them onto a truck and be one of the first trucks in the world running these and that was like the gist of what I did. I basically stuffed the wheel wells with as big of wheels and tires that I physically could put on the damn thing and, uh, and, and that was it. I didn't level it, I didn't lift it, none of that and I was like hell yeah that's cool. You know I, I fit right in. After that I decided that wasn't enough so I, when I walked in the door I saw CO2. And this was CO2 like two generations ago, right? This was before it had the white powder coated BDS and the, you know, the Lincolns. And I fell in love with that model. Like I, I fell in love with that build in itself. It had the red, uh, I believe they were, they were, where were they? They were Axe or TIS. I, I forget exactly what they were, but, uh, but I just saw it on, in the showroom and I was like, man, I love this thing. So I begged Sean at that time, and mind you, I'm only like three months old at the time. I begged him to sell it to me and you know he basically told me to shove it and I was like okay whatever so I went to his cousin John and and I bought the Hummer because that's all I could buy at the time I guess. Um, it was cool though, it was sweet, it was the Hummer H3, it was all black, it was like the military edition, it was sitting on Archons as well, lifted, super cool, compliments all over town. When it came to trucks, I, I'm not super mechanically inclined by any stretch of the word, so like it's always made me worry a little bit to do any of that, you know, I always had a banker or a, someone that I could lean on to help me with, with those types of things because it, it just doesn't connect for me. I'm not a mechanical guy. I'm a graphic designer for a living, you know? I, I use a computer and, and not necessarily my hands when it comes to this. It always deterred me a little bit from, from building because I couldn't do it myself. So this time around, again, we sold the Hummer. I bought an Audi. I made that mistake. I bought a 2012 Audi A7, thought it was the coolest shit in the world. It was a sport back, silver, mint condition, thing was awesome. Right there, it solidified set in stone that I just was not a car guy. It, it, it was probably the coolest car I feel like I could have bought for being a bigger guy. And it was a big car and it was like a limo and still it just wasn't enough. And every day that I came to this place, I saw the trucks on the pad. I saw the trucks in the showroom. I saw CO2 and it made me really realize that, that I, I needed to go back to another truck. So back to the drawing board, sold the Audi, reached out to Sean again. I call him, I said, Sean, you're in Florida the co2 sits in the showroom you're doing nothing with it let me buy it and he told me i go through vehicles like i go through underwear and i don't disagree i mean since i've been here i've had like five vehicles or something like that but i knew if i bought something that awesome that i would have kept it you know and i tried to pitch that to him he's just not a guy that accepts that so I, uh, I i lost that battle unfortunately and he not only did he not sell me the truck he came and got it and took it to Florida. And so, so that sucks. So 
I guess it's kind of cool though, because it lets me do something I was never able to do, which is take a, take a vehicle from the ground up and truly build it to what I want it to be. Not that I know how to install all the parts, not that I know even what all the parts are, like when it comes down to the little brackets and all that shit, like this gave me an opportunity to, to do my own thing. And, uh, and that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. So I spent countless hours after Sean told me no, I went, I'm gonna build my version of CO2. I knew I didn't care whether it was a 2500 or 1500. I knew CO2 was also a gasser. So at that point, what does it matter if it's a diesel or, or, or gas, right? Like, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna build the black version of CO2 was kind of like my, my goal because that was the truck that has caught my eye from day one of walking in here up until day 900 and whatever the hell we're at, thousand and something now. And so I went on the internet and I knew I needed a 14 to 15. I knew I was looking for a 1500, something in that year range. We live in Wisconsin and up here, rust is such a big factor that one of the biggest things that I looked for was I wanted something that was low mileage. I wanted something that was clean. I wanted, I, I wanted that exact year range and a 1500 in black. I searched and I searched and I searched and I searched and the craziest thing. So it, you know, my phone kept dinging to me and telling me that, you know, there was a, there was a new thing listed for Silverado, new thing listed for Silverado. Finally, we, uh, I, I clicked on one. The guy happened to live on my street, like the street that I live on. So I went over there and, uh, and went and looked at it and it was super clean, like inside and out. The guy took care of the vehicle. It had absolutely no rust, you know, a little bit, a little bit underneath, nothing major, nothing to be concerned about that can't be wire wheeled off and, you know, undercoated, but there was no body rust, no rust in the wheel wells, which is again, like if you guys aren't from here, it is so once you see rust, that shit spreads like wildfire. And, and I wanted to make sure we didn't have any of that. It was exactly what I wanted. It was a black. 2014 Chevy Silverado. It had a, just under 80,000 miles on it. It was very well taken care of. It was su super clean, no rust, it, it, exactly what I wanted to a T. So I uh, ended up, you know, talking with the bank, getting a hold of him. He held it for me and came and delivered it for me at work. And so that was super cool. I was getting a ride back and forth after I sold the Audi in between buying the truck. And so he came, delivered it, handed him some cash, and, and then it was mine. But anyways, I figured we'll get into the build. Once we got the truck, solidified it, brought it to the garage, or, or, or brought it to work, I started to really dial in what I wanted to do with this thing. And, and in order to make it as close to, you know, obviously it's not gonna be an exact match to CO2, but I, I wanted that vibe, you know? I wanted the same style of kit, the same style of wheels, the, you know, like I wanted it to be my, like when I get out and I shut that door and I'm walking into a gas station that I'm looking back going, hell yeah, that's mine, you know? I started reaching out to some of, you know, some of, some of the best companies in the game and that started with the, the suspension. So the suspension, we went and we reached out to uh, Bell Tech and, and Bell Tech ended up sending us the first in the world, I believe, or the first in the country. Uh, I, I apologize if I'm wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that this is accurate. For this year making model, it's their uh, coilover kit, which looks super good. It's basically, you know, red springs on gold coilovers. It's beautiful. All the parts were like carbon gray besides the actual suspension components. So the cross member, the front and rear, the sway bar, all of that is like a real dark, like graphite, like grayish metal looking. Looks super awesome, super excited to throw that in. We'll be working with Radar Tires. They sent us a brand new set of Renegade RTs, 35, 13 and a half, 24s. And those are gonna be wrapped around some Archon Lincolns in 24 by 14, negative 81. Uh, that'll be the black version, the black and milled version of the Archon Lincoln. We went with some performance on the truck so we ended up doing the super chips dash pack uh the super chips dash pack plus from holly performance and uh and super chip obviously the flow master outlaw full exhaust system the flow master intake a bnm rear differential cover as far as the performance goes that's pretty much it i also purchased on the side a eas system it's going to allow me to control my lights right through my tuner kind of cool we're working with black label lightning uh, on the rock light kits that are gonna be going inside of the truck. Rough Country, 
took care of us and, and we'll be working with them on some of the their their brand new steps. So it's the uh, Rough Country Retract Power Steps. They have, uh, you know, the lights on them go up and down as I open and close the doors. That'll be pretty sweet. Body Armor, uh, working with them on the bumpers. They did front and rear bumpers, the Eco Stealth bumpers. Morimoto for the lighting. So we're gonna go Morimoto headlights and tail lights front and rear. I'll be working with uh, FX window tinning to ceramic coat the whole truck when it's all done. So we're gonna polish it up, get it all nice, and then we'll end up ceramic coating the entire truck to keep that polish, you know, make keep it, keep it clean. I also picked up a rough country, three piece hard tonneau cover, tri-fold tonneau cover for it. Um, make sure that I was, I was tired of going to the store and having to put everything inside of the truck. I, I, I have a daughter and I just want to make sure that I could throw things in the bed to where she wasn't crammed back there if I bought a bunch of stuff at the store. So I bought that to kind of finish it off and make it super clean, uh, super classy. So I, I'm very excited. I, I'm super pumped to be able to, again, like envision what I want and watch all this stuff come in and, and just we're so close to getting ready to launching it all on there and watch this process. And, uh, and I hope there's some guys like me out there in the audience that, that really don't know the mechanical side of really what goes into this because I'm gonna be bugging the shit out of Banker asking a lot of questions, the whys as to what he's doing. I've seen him build a million trucks, you know, since I've been here, but they were never mine. So I never asked those questions. I never, now that it's mine, I'm going to be like a, you know, a, a five-year-old banker, banker, banker. You know, what are you doing? And, and I hope that helps some of you really understand what goes into a lot of this stuff and understand what those little pieces and brackets and bolts and whatever are, you know, throughout this series. Listen, I have no idea what any of this I look forward to seeing the final product. I have a vision in my head of what it's going to look like. I tried to render it up in Photoshop. It didn't come out nearly as awesome as I thought it was going to. So I guess we just really have to wait and see the final product and wait for it to be done. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's really all I got. It's kind of my story, why we're doing this thing. Uh, you know, Papa Sean said no. So I said, I'm going to build my own. And that's where we're at. We're going to build our own.